Hi, and in this lesson we're going to take a look at bringing in our VR hands and adding in the animations for when you press the buttons on the controllers. Let's take a look. So here we are back in our little virtual environment that we made from the last lesson. And in this one we're going to actually be looking at creating our VR hands. We've got our head, which is our camera, and now we want to add our hands in. Well, there's a couple of ways you can do this depending on your game. If you've got like a prop or something like a lightsaber, then you can create like that model and assign it where I'll show you in a second. But if you're actually looking to get your real hands, or not your real hands, but your virtual looking realistic hands in your VR environment, then it's slightly more tricky with the XR interaction technique. Beforehand, I was using the Oculus integration package and it comes with everything you need. When you're using the XR interaction toolkit, there is actually no hands, so you need to create your own. Um, now you can get the hands from various sources. You can go to the Oculus site and download them. And I think Steam has some as well that you, that you can use. And just do a quick Google search for any controllers or hands online and you, sh you might be able to find some. The thing is it's going to need to come with some animations as well. But what I've done to make this tutorial a lot easier for you is actually create those hands and make that package um, available to download so you can get the hands in the description. And then go ahead and import them to your project. So when you go and import your package, once you've downloaded it, you'll notice it's uh, called VR Hands 2020. It's got a list of animations, material, two models, and a couple of prefabs. We're gonna go ahead and import that. And once that's imported, you'll see it now becomes available in your project under assets, VR Hands 2020. And we're gonna to need to assign these hands to the correct object in our XR rig. So to do that, select your XR rig, drop it down, once again on camera offset, drop it down and you'll see the left hand controller and the right hand controller. Now any object you put on here is gonna become tracks when you start your experience. So if we were to put a cube in here, then as you move your hand, you'll see a cube. So what we can do is we're gonna assign our prefab to this. So go ahead and we'll click on the right hand controller. Uh, and then you'll see here on our, we have an XR controller. It goes through some of the um, buttons here and then it talks about our model prefab. And this is where we wanna drag in our model. So we're gonna go ahead and click on prefabs and you'll see we've got a right hand model looking lovely and our left hand model also looking awesome. So we'll go back to our right hand controller, drag in our right hand model into the prefab. We'll do exactly the same for the left. Pick it all up, boom. Now, if we were to run this, we would have our hands in VR, but you'll notice that you won't be able to actually see your fingers moving when you press the buttons. And to do that, we're gonna use a couple of scripts on our hand prefab models to listen out for a certain button press and then play an animation. And the way the animation is going to be controlled is using something called a blend tree through the animator. Let's take a look at adding that. So you'll notice in our VR Hands 2020 folder under animations, we have a list of animations. We're going to make a, an, an animator here. We're going to right click, create, and then animator. Let's just find it on the list. Here we go, animator controller. And I'll go ahead and name this left hand controller. Just like so. And then we're gonna need our animator. I've got mine here as a tab, but if you haven't, you can go to window, animation, animator, and it's gonna open up here. Make sure you've got the left hand controller highlighted and go right click, create state from new blend tree and then double click the blend tree. Uh, we can go ahead and we can remove this. We don't need that one. Uh, and then we want to add a couple of floats. We're going to call one trigger. And remember the spelling here, it's quite important. Grip. Like so. And then once you click on the blend tree, under blend type, we want to set it to 2D freeform Cartesian. And under parameters, we're going to set the first one to trigger and then the second one to grip. Then we need to add a couple of motion fields. So we need to go to the plus and go add motion field. And we need to do this four times. And the reason we have four uh, motion fields here is because essentially we have four types of animation that we want to control. We have an idle state, trigger state, a grip state, and then a state where we're pressing both the trigger and the grip at the same time. So for our idle state, let's go ahead and drag in our idle animation here, and that's stored in L hand default anim. 
go ahead and click the arrow and you'll see here it says take one we'll go ahead and drag that into the top uh, and with these values are fine because um, it's idle so nothing is going to have any value and then the second is when we're going to be pulling the trigger which is going to be a pinch so find our pinch animation which is down here click the arrow drag in the pinch and here we want to say a one and a zero and then second or third but rather we should have our grip uh, and let's find that in our list which is the same as a fist so go ahead and take our L hand fist and put it in there and add a zero in the Y column and then we have a value where we're pressing our grip button and our trigger button and that's going to result in any animation you want really you can kind of drag it in but I'm just going to use the fist so when you press the trigger and the grip it's going to make a fist so I'm going to go ahead and drag that in there and give this the value of one and one so now that we've done the left hand we need to go ahead and do the right hand uh, and this is actually quite easy so what we're, all we're going to do here is get our animator controller control D to duplicate right click and we want to rename right hand controller hit enter double click the blend tree then select it and we're going to replace all these with the animations for the right hand so this is um, currently L hand default anim we want the right hand default anim so we go ahead and put that in there left pinch find the right pinch go okay, right hand pinch like that in and then the right hand fist like that into the bottom two now that we've created those blend trees we need to assign the, the animator controller to the right hand so in the prefabs folder we've got the right hand model under controller select that get this window and then select the cor corresponding controller so we want right hand controller and same for the left left hand controller And then next we're going to create a script that sits on both of these two prefabs that is going to be listening for the button presses the trigger and the grip and then when they do it's going to get the animator and it's going to set a float to these corresponding values either a trigger or the grip value and then play the corresponding animation let's take a look at creating that script so if we navigate to our scripts folder right click create c sharp scripts and we'll call this and animation folder and then double click to open up in Visual Studio so because we're using Unity's XR system we do actually need to specify that in our scripts we're going to type using Unity engine .xr give us access to all the libraries and functions that we need finish off with a semicolon then we're going to need a few variables I'm just going to go ahead and knock that down a little bit and the first one we're going to need is a public it's called input device characteristics this is going to allow us to specify what device we're going to be looking for we can just go ahead and call this controller type once we found this controller we're going to need something to store it so we can put public input device this controller actually this doesn't need to be public this can be private next up we're going to need a link to our animator so we can say public animator call this animation controller and then we need a private bool just to detect whether we found the controller or not we can say private private bool is controller out. That's all the variables we'll need. And in the start function, we need to get a handle on our um, animator. So we can say animation controller equals get component animator like so and 
now we want to actually look for the controller that we need to get a hold of. Um, now we could do all this in start, but in a minute it'll make more sense when you see it. We're going to call a separate function called initialize. And this is going to handle the obtaining of our controller. So I'm going to make a function here, or call a function rather, called initialize. Uh, and then I haven't made this function yet, so call trick. I can go control and then space, and control and then full stop. And then it'll pop up this box and allow me to generate a method like so. So now we're going to need to get our controller. So we can remove this. Don't need that. But we do need to look at what input devices we are and get a device with a specific characteristic. We need to say input devices dot get devices with characteristics and then open up a bracket. Now we can use a variable that we made here called con our controller type as we've specified in our input device characteristics what controller we're looking for. And then as you, as you can see in the little drop down it's come up with the um, the fact that we need to store all our devices in a list. That's okay. We'll go ahead and we'll make a list up here. You can say list input device. Yeah, I can type XR devices equals new list input device. And then back in our line below, we need to see to put um, a comma and then our list where we're going to store them so it's xr devices and that's our line done make sure we put a semicolon on the line above and below we need to do a check to make sure we've actually found a controller um, and to do so we can use an if statement so we can say if and then we're going to check to see if there's anything on in our list so xr devices dot count dot equals zero so if there's nothing in our list, just write a debug here. No XR devices. Semicolon. So that's only if there's no devices in our XR devices list. If there is, else. And we can say that our input device here, which we made to store our controller, so this controller equals XR devices zero. That's going to assign the first one in our list to our input device variable here. Because we found it, we can then say that this, um, we can then say that is controller found equals true semicolon okay the next thing to take care of is if on start we go and try and initialize it jumps to our initialize function if it doesn't if it runs through and it doesn't find a controller we then need to check every frame for a controller until it finds one so to do that we can say if is controller found this is going to return true so if is controller found is true we actually want to say if it's not true so exclamation mark at the start pop a line and we want to try and initialize again so that's going to keep going until it's managed to find um, the right controller and then else so it has found a controller so this is the part where we're actually going to be looking for button presses to do that we're going to use our um, conditional or logic statement so if this controller dot try get features value we can say common usages dot and then this will you get a list of all the stuff you you can do um, with your device and we're looking for, for a very specific one this is going to be our trigger so we just type in T and you can see there trigger and trigger button there are two options one is going to be um, a trigger like control pressed with the index finger, that's good. And one is a trigger button, a binary measure of whether the index finger is activating the trigger. We will only want, we could do that one because that's going to return true or false, which is usable, but not for our current setup. We need to get a float value. 
Um, so what we're going to say is trigger. Once we've got our button, we can get a float value back from this button, which is representative of how far the button has been pressed, ranging from zero to one. So we can say out float trigger value. So in this if statement, we can then say animation controller dot set float. And then this is this is important now because this is going to reference the name of our parameter we set up in our animator. So trigger and grip. So we want to make sure we spell this right. So trigger. And then we specify here the trigger value, the float that we're going to pass to it, which is given to us here. Semicolon. And then we're going to do exactly the same for the grip. So we can highlight all of this, control C, control V, and let's make sure we change everything that says trigger to grip. Same for float. And then parameter. Finish off passing it the grip value. So let's go and hook this up in Unity. Let's go back. Then we want to go to our hand models. So we're on our left hand model in our prefabs folder. We're going to go add component and animation controller. And we're going to tell this script that we want. Actually, my head's in the way. It's moving the other way a minute. There we go. You can see what's going on. So we've got our controller type. We're going to set it to the left because we're on our left hand model, but also controller. And this is. This can be, you can select multiple ones of these, which is really useful. It's going to help us out. So once we've set those two values, we need to go and do the same for the right hand model as component and animation controller. Controller type is going to be our right controller. I'm going to go ahead and save. So that's our hand set up there. Go to our scene, double check in our XR rig. Make sure you've got the prefabs in the right place. The right hand controller and the left hand controller uh, and that that's going to be your hands so now we can go ahead and run this and build it to our headset and see what we get so here we are in vr and i've got my hands did they oops let's whack the microphone i've got my hands they look great and what we're going to do now is going to go ahead and press the grip which is going to make a fist like so left right and then left and we're going to go and it does uh does the does the business and then uh, right, which is a pinch, and right and left. And then both will make a fist. That's working great. Um, you'll probably notice I've got massive lightsabers sticking out. Uh, and this is only as, as a result of um, a couple of components that are on our XR rig, on our hands. This is the XR ray interactor. Um, and in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at actually picking stuff up, which is surprisingly easy. Um, so I'll see you in the next lesson. Ooh, microphone.